Hey, my name is Frederick. In this video, I will introduce you to FALET regulations in the European Union. And yes, I actually had to look up the pronunciation before recording this video. Uh, up until now, and I actually believed it was FATALETS, but yes. That was wrong. Now, a phthalate is a, is a chemical. It's a plasticizer that is 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 used in while well, plastics manufacturing to improve the, the flexibility and durability of of certain plastics. Okay, and there are many types of phthalates uh, you can see in in a, in a list here. The, the problem with phthalates is that they uh, they are linked to to certain cancers. Uh, obesity and also male infertility so yeah uh, phthalates are it's it's uh, it's if you ask me one of one of the, uh, the biggest uh, problems that uh, facing facing us in in a species in many ways we see sperm counts collapsing we see how uh, metabolism is, is is also decreasing compared to what it used to be in in a few decades ago and and we also see ca different types of cancers on 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 the rise so phthalates is really a big deal and it's it's very few people that even take this into consideration and what is actually doing to our bodies now Phthalates can be found in in well plastic products, but but also coatings. Now the main risk is in PVC plastics, and I've been dealing with many situations of, of PVC plastic products failing uh, testing that also included well phthalate testing. Okay, so that's really really the highest risk, but. I've also seen this in, say, watch leather straps, which, um, yeah, th that was quite quite puzzling. But we we understood that the reason that specific watch leather strap failed uh, phthalate testing was uh, because there were phthalates in the in in the coating for some reason. The coating that was applied to to give it, you know, a shiny surface or something like that. But yeah, you can find um, these phthalates, these chemicals, in a in a wide range of products. Now, are phthalates banned in the EU? Well, phthalates are regulated, but not outright banned. Um, the thing with with phthalates and other chemicals, is they are to an extent needed. Okay, and as I also mentioned on on the previous slide. Um, Phthalate-free products are also also more expensive. Okay, so it's also a, a cost um, factor to take into consideration. But phthalates are regulated by REACH, ROHS, the Cosmetics Regulation, the Toy Safety Directive, and also Plastic Food Contact Material Regulations. This is also an interesting point here. Um, DEHP, which is one phthalate, okay, you can see that in the list I just showed you a few slides ago, is actually uh, making up 40% of all product recalls due to, well, due to chemicals, okay? That shows you that phthalates have a very outsized, what should you say, impact when it comes to compliance issues. So you're importing products, um, then, then this is really one of the main compliance risks that you are dealing with. Okay, well, on top of the fact that this is this is really making us fat and infertile, um, which yeah, that's that's also a problem, I guess. But yeah, as an importer or manufacturer, this is also a really really big risk. Um, okay. And that's also reflecting my uh, experience, as I said, when our clients been having issues with failed lab tests, it's almost, I would say in 70% of the cases, it's due to some of these phthalates, uh, more so than lead or cadmium or overall product safety, like in terms of design and construction. Now, let's look into, into the specifics here. 
So first we have reach. Reach applies to all products and materials, regulates substances, sets limits. If your product contains um, a phthalate in this case above the set limit, uh, then it's non-compliant, okay? So reach lists a bunch of these, these phthalates uh, like DHP, DBP, BBB, I don't know what that's even, that even stands for. Um, and additional restrictions apply to child care products. Okay, now as I said, the thing with REACH is it applies to all consumer products in the EU, whereas some of the regulations I will now cover, or, or actually the rest, of the, the other regulations that I will cover, all of them, every single one of them, they apply only to certain categories of products, okay? So yeah, there's there's some definitely some overlap in that sense. I guess you can't regulate phthalates enough. So the second one we have is the cosmetics regulation, uh, and there are specific um, specific uh, restrictions on. Well, these are actually the this very same that 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 I showed you on the previous slide. Now, the way this regulation can differ is that they may cover different phthalates, or although there will be overlap, but it's also about the substance limits. Okay, so uh, cosme the cosmetics regulation may have a stricter limit than than reach does, for example. Okay, now I don't know those limits. I don't have to. The labs that we work with, they they keep track of that. I'm going to get back to that in a bit. Then we have ROHS, uh, which applies to electronics. It covers heavy metals like lead, cadmium, mercury, and so on, and also a, a number of phthalates. And as you see here, at least as of today, it's zero point, the concentration, the maximum concentration, is 0.1% uh, based on weight, okay? And actually, I'm not sure about the reach limit. Then we have the Toy Safety Directive that applies to, yeah, you guessed it, toys. Um, and the limit is actually the same, at least as of now. And phthalates are also covered by, by different EN71 standards that are also referenced by the Toy Safety Directive. And last but not least, we have the... Uh, Plastic Food Contact Materials Regulation, 10 uh, 2011. And here you can also see a list of uh, regulated uh, phthalates and, um, well, the limits that, that also apply. Now, there are, uh, there could also be uh, other phthalates on the list and there may be uh, differences depending on, on, on the type. Uh, I think they have uh, specific restrictions for, for baby feeding bottles, for example, for good reasons. Yeah. So, now you've seen, I mean, I understand it's confusing, it's DBP, BBP, DD, yeah, whatever. Um, how do you really know which phallus to get your product tested for? The good thing is that you work with a qualified testing company like Kima, or SGS or you know TUV then you don't need to know I don't know I've been working with this for uh, 10 years now and I, I don't know I don't keep track of the limits because when you need to get something tested you, you reach out to the testing company you say okay this is the product this is the application this is the age group I'm gonna sell it in the EU they make that assessment for you and they also keep track they keep track of the current restrictions okay so I think what really matters to you as an importer, or maybe you're a Chinese manufacturer, what matters to you is to, to, to know that these restrictions exist. And when you purchase materials, you may also need to specifically instruct your supplier and, and let them know that, oh, you, need to, you must use REACH compliant uh, phthalate-free PVC plastic, for example, phthalate-free coating. Now, how much does phthalate testing cost? That depends on the number of regulations that apply. It depends on the material. It can be anything from three, four, five hundred USD and up. And that's uh, per product or, or per, per material. So, uh, yeah, it really depends. It really depends on 
how many tests must be done simply. All right, that's everything for today. If you want to learn more about um, pro product compliance requirements in the EU and the US, then you can try out our compliance gate information tool which helps you to actually make classifications, tells you which regulations and labeling requirements and so on may uh, apply to a certain products. You can go to compliancegate.com tool. So thank you for watching this video.